Multipass compositing is one of the more common tasks that a Nuke artist might be asked to complete, and so these new tool sets inside of Nuke provide a great way for a new artist coming to Nuke for the first time to get up to speed with how you might do that inside of the Nuke node graph. Now we currently have five different tool sets available, one for Arnold, one for Cinema 4D, one for Modo, one for Renderman, and one for V-Ray. However, the way that those passes are used and composited back together is essentially the same for each one. So I'm only going to concentrate on one at this point, and that's the V-Ray multipass comp. So let's just zoom in on that. So let's start by taking a look at the input. At the top here, we have this Beauty Rebuild V-Ray EXR plugged into the multipass EXR input of our toolset. Now inside of here are multiple layers or channels available for us to use inside of Nuke. Now to quickly take a look at those, I can bring in another node called the Layer Contact Sheet. And if we just hook that up to our EXR and view it, we'll see over here on the left every single channel that is available for us to use. To make it a little bit simpler, you can turn on Show Layer Names and also center that, and you'll see the name of the layer underneath each image. So inside of here, you can see we've got our RGBA or our Beauty. We've got our Global Illumination. We've got our direct lighting, we've got our reflection, and we've also got our refraction as well, or transparency. So we're going to take each one of these passes in turn and recombine them until we end up with our original beauty pass. The benefit of doing it this way, however, is that we get more control over exactly what our GI, lighting, reflection, and refraction passes look like. So let's just get rid of our layer contact sheet for now. I'm going to start taking a look by moving down into the toolset. So first of all, we split out our channels. There are four shuffle nodes here, one for each of the channels that we want to split out and work on individually. So inside of the uh, shuffle node, we have an in at the top here. And inside of here, we just need to choose the channel that we want to split out. In this case, it's GI, and that will change on every one of these shuffle nodes going across. So if I view my shuffle node here, you can see that instead of seeing the beauty, we only see the global illumination element of our multipass EXR. The same is then true of the direct lighting, the reflection, and the refraction as well. So that is splitting out the channels. Now underneath these, we have four individual pipes coming into the next section, which is our grading section. And inside of here at the moment, I've just put four basic grade nodes. And I'll come back to these in a minute once we've recomposited these passes back together. Underneath that, we have our merge back together section, which, as you might expect, is going to merge each one of these individual streams back into a single final beauty pass. Now whilst the math used to do this can change depending on the passes used, in our case it is a simple plus operation for each one of these. So first of all we take our GI, we then plus the direct lighting over the top, we then plus the reflection over the top, and finally plus the refraction over the top as well to end up with our final image. And if we compare that with our original, I'm just going to select this and hit 2 so we can switch back and forth between them in our viewer just by tapping 1 and 2, you can see they are now exactly the same. Our original image coming from our renderer at the top here looks exactly the same as our recomposited image that is the result of our splitting and merging operations in Nuke. So why have we done this? If the end result is exactly the same as the image we started with, why bother going through the whole process of splitting out and then merging back together these channels? And the answer is really control. If we need to make subtle tweaks to this image, either creative tweaks or fixes, only having a single channel, a single image, can mean that you either have to create masks in order to make subtle changes, or you might even have to go back to 3D and get your artist to re-render this. Having these extra channels means that we can make a wide range of changes without having to go back to 3D and without having to manually make those masks. So let's choose an example. For instance, on the right hand side here, this sphere is currently clear. Now let's pretend that our supervisor comes over and says, no, it's not supposed to be clear, it's supposed to be green. Well, we could fix that in two ways, right? We could either go back to our 3D department and get them to render a green sphere, or we could maybe mask around the sphere with a perfectly circular mask and color correct just inside of it. But actually, now that we've done this multi-pass compositing, we know that we have that transparency information isolated in this shuffle node, in this pipe. Now, if I view the bottom of my comp, I can follow that pipe down into our grading section, double click my grade node, and inside of here, I can make any number of grading choices that will only affect that element of our image. So let's go into my gain here, and I'll move this from the center over into the green, and you can see that our sphere immediately turns that color. And this is at the full resolution of the image, it's in real time, and you don't have to go back to 3D to achieve this result. So this is the real benefit of multi-pass compositing. I can color correct and grade and affect 
any of these different elements that make up my image without having to go back and re-render them. And you can imagine how much more time you'd save if these were complex shapes moving over the course of a long animated sequence. So that really is the beauty of multi-pass compositing, and you can do that easily in any of these brand new tool sets that now ship with Nuke.